All right, folks. So a lot of people who are following the bracket were probably expecting this to be Kingston or Say My Name up against Nikov. But Baba Rum, who's a French player who, from all I know about him, is has a full-time job. He's an engineer. He's over the age of 30. This guy beats Nikov, who is a big favorite there, 3-2. And now we find him here again in round number three. It's a Chinese war to start off the series. This is against Kingston, who has, is a younger player who's had some top 16 performances before, but I think it will be tough for him, and it should be tough for Baba to qualify for Hidden Cup main event. And we are here. Now, um... I, like, apparently there's a risk that something's weird is happening with my house. So I don't really know what to do right now, because it's like, stream house, stream house, real life internet, real life internet. I might need a minute. Um, because, you know, where I live is kind of important. So I'm going to do this, okay? And I, I am really sorry to do this, but again, I, you know, kind of live beyond just make the content. So I'm just going to back away and I'll be back hopefully very quickly and then we'll continue here. But I expect there to be most of the action through the middle and lots of scouts and lots of death and lots of things. So enjoy. I shall return. Okay, nice job casting, guys, but it actually wasn't. It's a false alarm. All right. It's a false alarm. Um, I'm back. We've got a game. We've got action. Sorry to ruin up, ruin your silence there. Okay, but like, this is crazy, right? Kingston against Baba Rum round three is never something I expected. Oh my God, Baba. What are you doing out here, my friend? I think he got demoed into doing this because of how many times Nikov demoed him in that series yesterday. Okay, Whew, sorry, I just... <laughs> running through the halls and we're good to go hmm doesn't look like I missed anything that was the villager kill I actually don't mind this I think if you get the walls down it makes life a lot easier for you in the future so I think the thinking is there but uh berries farms that's the focus right now scouts and then obviously spearmen let's let's think predictions Kingston, Baba Rum. Thoughts, guys? Game one. Normally I say this before the game, but we just hopped into it. I, I would have to see the map pool. I think I'm going to lean towards Kingston. But the Baba Rum story is wild to me. I'm going to say Kingston 3-2. I do think it will be close because of how consistently Baba Rum played. But it really is a, is a wild one. I don't think these guys have ever played each other in a tournament before. Uh, Live Laugh Wololo says, Hey, longtime YouTube watcher here. Finally made the move to Twitch. I'm in South Africa, so quite a different time difference. Hey, welcome. Glad you could make it. Thanks for making it. There's any other new people in chat today? Might be a few of them. Holy walls from Baba Ram. My goodness. Again, it's like... At this point, the demos can't wander past, which is nice. This, though, seems very ambitious. He already lost a villager here. And Kingston makes his way to the wood line anyways. Once a villager killed, that old lumber camp is actually super helpful there. And over here, Kingston's going to see this. I just think this is just always going to be a deadville. <laughs> this is just... There is no chance... There is no way you complete this wall. Let's see. Kingston. Well, he has weak scouts, but he probably would just fight off the spearmen and force a quick wall. Okay, spearmen got some really nice hits, actually. Another spearman's here, but the villager's dead, and that's a, now the second villager that Kingston has killed. He's also defended very nicely. Biggest achievement of Baba was probably winning Visible Cup three years ago so visible cup was a tourney that where the players who weren't in the main event of hidden cup so the players out of the top 16 they you played on hidden cup settings without a hidden name and he won that which was crazy and he doesn't really play that many tournaments he does play ranked from time to time he's like has periods where he's active and periods where he's inactive because i imagine work and such 
But um, he beat players like Dragonstar and Catpotch and um, I forget what other names were in that tournament, but that's that's the one that comes to mind for me. Is he won a tourney which didn't have the top 16, which means in theory he could have been around like the top 20 mark at that point. But it's been a while, right? And here he comes, Kingston again. He's going to try and snipe another villager. And it's just, he's had the more mud flow approach here, in my opinion. But in the end, he only killed two vills. Has to be said. And the wall's actually going to complete, which is wild. And then Kingston, his best result was when he qualified for Red Bull, the Red Bull LAN. Um, and it really it showed a lot of talent there. Now, I've spoken to Kingston. And Kingston, uh, you know, he's in college now. And, oh, I think we had a demo attempt there. And it just hit the wall, and that was it. He's, he's in college. He doesn't play the game as much as he was maybe two years ago. But still has an, a, lot, a lot of talent. And the way to describe Kingston would be... He's, he's kind of like Sebastian is, almost, skill-wise. Very aggressive. The, Kingston also is really underrated on closed maps. He likes to play a lot of arena-style maps, too. Which I think... Uh, pathing. There we go. As he kills a vill. I think that adds a lot to his uh, ability to perform in tournaments. Because a lot of the aggressive players also can't play closed maps that well. Yeah, like, Kingston almost beat Viper in, in, like, his opening game at Red Bull. And I like Kingston's performance here. So far, he's just played a little bit more along the lines of what you would expect. But I do see that Baba's got a demo out. And I don't think there's going to be an overchop on the wood line anytime soon, but he could use this demo on units if he wishes to. And there's the demo, and ball! Boom. Nice job there. I mean, that's two scouts down. Th this is what I've been saying about this map. Everyone needs to have a dock up. Late feudal. Everyone. I mean, it's just so worth it, right? Even the threat of demos is going to affect how people play the map. And Kingston... He's now struggling. He doesn't have any land control. So he has to be careful. And, like, here he comes. He wants to get a dock down. But now there's a demo here. And now there's scouts. And, oh! He actually lost the dock. That's 150 wood down the drain. That is really good value for Baba. Kingston did not have enough time to delete that. But actually, now he's going to just add the dock anyways. He's just bought the wood back. He will still be in Castle Age a little bit faster here. Yeah, the, uh, the T90 demo emote gets a lot of use. What a fun day, guys. It's been a little wild, but we finally get to start off a series at the very start. We did do that for, for Sebastian and Andy. But I think this series will be a little bit closer. We've got galleys from Baba now. Oh, no, his ships can get trapped in here. This could be disastrous. If he sets waypoints anywhere this direction... The ship from this dock will go this way, and it will likely be trapped between the two docks. Oh, man, that could be really bad. It's just one of those things, man. I'm waiting for it. His scouts are hoping to kill Vils. Kingston's defended very nicely here. And the ship is going to be... Trapped. Yep, called it... Just one of those things, man. If it happens to you enough times, you know what to look for. And I don't think he's played this map enough. It's a bit unfortunate. But, I mean, I don't know what you do besides delete a dock here at this point. Actually, is this ship stuck as well? This ship is stuck because of his walls on this side. At least you can delete the walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he deletes the dock. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, demo goes off. It doesn't actually do anything to the villagers. So, yeah, this is demo territory, people. You've got to be careful. We've got the War Galley upgrade in for Kingston, so he's got the better demos. And, uh, well, expect knights and camels to be around the other areas of the eco. But the demos... Again, featuring. There's a one-for-one one with the demo. Here the scout's still running around for Baba. The spears are slower than the scouts, so Baba can find a villager kill and hasn't found one yet this game. Finally founds, finds one. And a very nice job. 
So TC on the wood line makes sense. I think a TC on the other golds then would be the priority if you can get there. Another villager down. What a great job to keep these scouts alive. Also, these knights just broke through this wall. Like, <laughs> if you wall this far from your base, guys, you're not going to be able to wall behind it. So th there's now a hole there, and the knights can run right through. Uh, Navy still important. I, I think as exciting as demos are, though, I actually would also like to see even just fires. But I'm also a big fan of demos and demo and demo. Beautiful job. By the way, Chinese have more HP on their demos. So any other civilizations demo there wouldn't have survived that hit. But yep, fire galley's on the way. Scouts active. Knights into the back of the eco. Kingston finds the kills. What a weird map, man. Very tricky. Uh, Kennard in chat says, I would hate to play this map, but it's fun to watch. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. I, I really like playing it personally. Um, I like scrappy games. I like messy games. Uh, but I think the average player is not going to want to play this. And I'm curious on how frequently this will be played in the main event. Because the main event will be comprised of m mostly best of sevens. And there will be 13 total maps to choose from. So I could see a lot of players not wanting to play this map because it is so messy. So we might see it a lot less frequently in the main event in uh you know and see other things instead sorry i'm I don't know why i can't speak but guys this is all kingston right now kingston has had consistent threat on land he now taking a page out of babaram's book has had the water control and his eco is amazing he'll be on his third town center his upgrades are great his farming counts great his micro is insane he's just pressuring this guy all the time it's non-stop, and it's just the consistency with everything that you typically look for here for King for Kingston. And this is why there's so many Kingstoners out there who want this guy to qualify. Again, I wasn't really certain of what level he would bring in the qualifier because of my discussions with him when he told me, I really don't have that much time for the game. I'm not playing that much. This was like three months ago. But right now, man, I mean, this is... You can't just come into Mudflow and play like this if you haven't played quite a few games and gotten a feel for it. He's made it look very easy. And I also think in some ways, Baba has invited the pressure with his style. It's been a little bit passive. So it could be just that first game in the series. He did lose game one against Nikov as well on this map. So maybe it's not his map. But Kingston, man... Taking the stone now. And even over here on this gold, I mean, I I'm waiting for a castle. I think if you're going to drop a castle, somewhere around here would make sense to protect your wood line, your stone. But then also, if you want to go forward, you could maybe play place an aggressive castle next to Baba Rum's TC. So, people have mentioned that Baba's name is from... Um, it could be from, like, a French comic. Is it from, um... Can you guys confirm that? I actually know the comic that people are referencing. Because I had it in my house growing up. I only had the French version, because my dad... He lived in France at one point. Asterisk? Okay, so... So, what... Is it the name of someone in that comic? Is it a character? Sorry, forgive me for, um... For not knowing this, but... It's somewhat niche, I think. It's also a pastry. Okay. Okay, th that's why I was curious. Because uh, as the Komodo Dragon's going to kill Kingston's villager here. And that's unimportant because we've also got a demo. Oh, God. Coming through here. Um, I I know that Baba used to have another name. And it was Tarto Pum. Which I think is another pastry. <laughs> I think all of his names are named after sweets. Big demo there on Baba. And I mean, Kingston is just completely overwhelming the guy right now. And it's it's really, unfortunately, you know, it's not really the closest. It, Kingston has played this so beautifully. Perfect amount on land, perfect amount on water, and then his eco is flying. Look at these farms. These farms were not here the last time we checked. These farms are still here. 
And then he's still, like, he's going to be outposting the sides. He lost a villager there, but he's getting vision on the sides, so he knows where to pressure next. He constantly has some type of a threat towards the middle here. And looks to me like he wants to finish off the game with a castle. Might be a little worried, though, when he sees some of the navy that Baba's sending forward. Did I call it niche? I consider it, by comic standards, somewhat niche. Yes. Compared to the popularity of other comics. But maybe it's not niche. I don't know. Like, at least in the U.S., it is niche. Right? I think it's probably a lot more popular in Europe, right? Yeah, I, obviously, it's very popular in France. I think it was originally French. And I'm sure there's English translations, right? Yeah, very European comic. We have a lot of people from Europe watching right now. It makes sense that people would, would not think it's niche. Like, I'm a big... My favorite comic, and in my opinion, the favorite com the best comic of all time is Calvin and Hobbes. Teleport. <laughs> Thank you, DE. Thanks for the teleport. Um, and Calvin and Hobbes I would consider to be niche as well, right? But that doesn't mean I don't think Calvin and Hobbes is the best comic of all time. If you've never read Calvin and Hobbes, you now have something to search for. It's incredible. All right, so Imp is on the way now for Kingston. Baba Rum's going to make some demos here for us. And demos, much like, you know, Megan L's, they could potentially change the game in, in a key moment, right? So maybe he can get some big explosions. The eco is closer than it was. But it's just so difficult right now for Baba to advance through the middle where these castles are right now for Kingston. <laughs> these walls are a little interesting for Kingston. He's just going to palisade wall behind his opponent's walls. That's kind of cute. And a couple sneaky demos here for Baba Rum. Looking around. Someone says Tintin is best comic. I read a lot of Tintin growing up as well. Wasn't that also French originally? Something tells me it was. Oh my god, look at these demos. I don't know. Belgian, Belgian, Belgian. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, Tintin was good. I, th Calvin and Hobbes and Tintin were the comics I read the most of. Like I said, I didn't have an English translation of the one we're talking about with Baba here. I only had French, and I didn't know French, so... How many demos to take out of TC? Is five enough? <laughs> we're about to find out! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> it's not enough! <laughs> But it's close. <laughs> Crazy explosions continue on Mudflow. You could argue it might not be worth it to do this, but I think it sends a message. And with Imp being in, Baba probably is staring at his screen right now like, oh man. And calls the GG. He realizes he's just completely outgunned. Guys, the most created unit for both of them. <laughs> the most created unit was a demo. And, uh, I mean, maybe it's new meta. <laughs> maybe this will happen every single time. I thought it would be scouts or spears, but it's just demos on Mudflow. Oh, man. Kingston takes the first game, though. Good stuff. I mean, really, the key, I would say, was that he had a much better feudal age. His farming economy, his scout control was just insane. I think approach-wise... The whole walling thing? I know he only lost two villagers here, but still, he lost villagers. The wall didn't offer a lot. And I think that says something about Baba Rum's comfort level here. Like, I don't think he's a player who's really that comfortable on Mudflow. He did lose against Nikov as well on this map. So I imagine he's going to really look towards the other maps for wins today. Okay, so wow. Same matchup that Baba Rum had in his series against Nikov on slopes the other day. We've got Baba Rum. It was actually two days ago playing as the Khmer. And he is playing up against Kingston's Byzantines. The map here is Slopes. And on Slopes, you have Deer and Shorefish on the sides. In the game that Baba had played against Nikov, he did utilize the sides and take the, the resources there. But he was unable to break Nikov later on in Imp. It was a crazy game. And Baba Rum played very well. Um, Yeah, I quite like this map. I think that it's easy for... It's easy to simplify it a little bit and say players are probably going to wall up. Uh, you know, eventually they expand to the sides and then, you know, they can test for the middle. But there's just so many different options and directions you could or should go. And if you slip up once, you could have 
some real problems. I would say the big thing that I think, because like what I try and nail down and what players normally do is they're fighting in feudal, but they expand for the sides. But honestly, guys, I think an underrated play is a play through the middle. Look at all the extra stones and look at all the extra gold through the middle. So if you get a for forward pressure here with like siege monks, yeah, your opponent's on the sides, but you could pressure that middle. There's lots of hills to utilize there. I think playing through the middle in some ways, if you get a snowball advantage, is actually the play. So it's not quite as simple. Again, still a map we're looking at. I did notice the other day that the way Woodlands generated just generated a little bit differently for each player. It's by no means bugged or anything. It's just a little bit more open for Baba than what he experienced the other day. It still looks like, what, six wood lines on screen, seven wood lines on screen. Here you've got maybe like one or two more for Kingston. So being Byzantine, so you could close it up a little bit more. Like this wood line's pretty close, for example. But there's a stone side and there's a gold side. And then, of course, you have your main gold and your main stone and then all these little wood lines. T90, yes, AoE2 is niche because it's only for those who can appreciate a good RTS. I would agree. But I also wouldn't say that, like, I, I don't want to sit here and say that uh, there aren't other good RTSs because just because I'm an AoE2 guy, you know? There are other good RTSs as well, I imagine, because people play them and people with more experiences than I have said so. But uh, I, uh, I personally am, I'm not an RTS guy. I'm an Age of Empires guy, um, and that's that's kind of always been how it's been for me. So I think for a lot of people with RTSs, they start with one, and then they move to the next, and they move to the next, and they move to the next, and they have an understanding of RTSs. Not me, dude. I was not an RTS guy. I was a console guy. I was playing freaking like FIFA and Call of Duty and uh, what else? I mean, there's probably the other game, Halo. Those are probably the games that I spent most of my time on other than age. But then when I when age came back into my life, it kind of changed everything for me. So, And uh, obviously now I have an appreciation for RTSs too, right? Even if I don't play them. But yeah, it was... Um, so I had watched my brother playing this game growing up. I obviously knew about it and I enjoyed it. So, but listen to this, guys. Is there anyone out there who thinks that some things in life are just meant to be? Are there any meant to be people out there? No judgment. Some people feel that some things just meant to happen, right? Um, so listen to this. I'm 20, I'm like 18, 19 years old, and I'm struggling in college. I have no clue what I want to do with my life. And I certainly don't have the money for college. Um, I like felt very out of place and didn't feel like I had anything to really put my passion into, right? Anyways, birthday rolls around in uh, 2013 and uh, I get a Steam gift card from my brother-in-law. Now, I did not even know what Steam was. So this tells you what type of gamer I was, but I had a school laptop that I bought for college, okay? So I get a Steam gift card. And I load up Steam on April 9th, 2013 for the first time. And the front page of Steam was Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. You want to know why? Because it came out on the my birthday that very day. And I don't know if it would have been on the front page a week later. I don't know if it would have been on the front page at all. I don't know the situation. But on my birthday in 2013, because I got a Steam gift card, I saw the HD Edition... Obviously, it was like, holy crap, I remember that game. Oh, my God. Turned into, why does no one like this game? I want to talk about it. Oh, my God. And then blah, 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 blah. I talked my ass off for 11 years, and here we are. So, um, yeah, that's like kind of, that's kind of crazy, right? My parents are like, it was meant to be. It was in God's plan. And that's not how my parents sound at all, you know, because that's pretty crazy. I don't know if I'm necessarily a meant to be type of guy, but uh, certainly got lucky. So, and I'm lucky and, and worked very hard and, and a lot more luck and uh, worked very hard and, and a lot more luck. So, walls and walls and walls here from Baba Rum. And he, he's got scouts. Um, on the other side of things, we're going to have scouts from Kingston. 
But the walls are down a bit faster here for Baba. And he did mill the side too. So he's taken those side resources. Playing very safe here. Against Nikov, he kind of had some issues getting the walls down. So I think he's a little concerned with that. Nikov was a bit more aggressive than Kingston is here. But the villagers are exposed here. And so this is the risk of coming out. But if you're Khmer, you then can hop inside the house. Nope, that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to head into the house. He's going to bring his own scouts over. And he's going to defend from this and everything's going to be fine. I thought you played since 2000. So I don't think I can get in trouble for saying this, but like 2013 wasn't the first time that I played the game again because I may or may not have downloaded uh, you know, cracked copies of various versions, you know. Like, I was like, I remember this game. I kept trying, but, like, the format sucked, and there was no, like, easy way to play online. And so, you know, I I may have dabbled before there was a way to buy the game again. I had the disc, like, three or four times because I had, like, three or four different periods of motivation to try and play it online with the old disc. So, like, I played it here or there. But in terms of, like, once I got the HD edition... I never stopped, and obviously I, I soon realized the HD edition was was inferior to some of the community options we had on Voobly and then moved to Voobly and all that, but um, I would guesstimate that since 2013, though, I probably put 20 to 25,000 hours into this game. So, because the definitive edition, this is not counting any of the time that I spend on like the YouTube content or anything where I'm not don't have the game open. The definitive edition I have uh, nine thousand hours on, and that came out in late 2019. So uh, yeah, I, I've spent a lot of time on this game. So and uh, if I average it out, I I immediately realize what am I doing? I, I have this like, wow. You ever be like, wow, I could have done so many other things. I look at it and I'm like, ooh, that's like literally uh, a third or a half of my existence for the last 10 years. And then I'm like, then I'm like, oh, but it's my job. So it being my job, it's it's not near as bad. Scout still attacking. Very passive game here. We'll head towards Castle Age though. This happens a lot on slopes. There are more aggressive strategies. These players didn't really opt for them though. And so far, zero kills. Babaram just attacking a house. Sees the spears will move away. And we have an archer range from Baba. So in the game against Nikov, he had issues against camels and went into crossbow, but he went into crossbow much later. He did the same thing, though, where he hid the range. So I'd say the... The, the range timing actually feels more suitable for maybe even like a cab archer play, but I don't think that would really feel that good. And uh, yeah, he hasn't clicked up yet. He's starting to make archers. So he wants a nice little early crossbow play against Kingston, which makes sense because if you stay on knights against the Byzantines, they have the cheap pikes and cheap camels. So Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys something, which is a positive. And, um, but it also comes with, I can't promise more specifics than this. Okay, hear me out. So, obviously, I think a lot of people know that the, uh, the performance of this patch right now is not great, right? Um, with the regrouping of units, uh, archers especially has felt a little bit more awkward for people. And build pathing has been, has been rough. And so I, I, of course, have, have communicated. <laughs> Uh, biggest event of my life. This is really important. I, I've, of course, communicated that that is, you know, it's it's kind of not great, right? Um, and so, uh, what I can say is there's a very good chance that for Hidden Cup, we will have a patch, meaning for the event, not necessarily for the wider scene, but because I, I can't pro make promises there, but um, I did, I've done some testing, let's just say, because they, they basically have said it's my, I, I, they're going to work on it and give me the option. And I still have more testing to do, but it is super good, right? It is super good. So, um, what I don't want to do is promise when I'm going to use that or what we're going to do. Cause I, I want to make sure that it's, I want to thoroughly do what I can, but, uh, I did play 
So I'm testing maps for the main event of Hidden Cup, and I've now turned that into, of course, testing the patch, and it's it's much better than what we have right now. So um, we have to get the timing right because we don't want people to... Like, if I were to give this to uh, players in the middle of round three, for example, of the qualifiers, some people might be like, why did they get it? And uh, we didn't, right? So we have to get the timing right. But I can just say I'm very positive on the game performance front for the for, for Hidden Cup, which is should be exciting, right? So good stuff. Um, but again, that's kind of vague, but that's probably where I have to leave it for the time being. Okay? So... Crossbow timing. I mean, this is surprised Kingston in some ways. And Kingston was actually going to do the same, though. So here he is, and he's making archers. He's getting crossbowmen. Does take the fight here. Interesting fight, because the scouts are quite weak, but they can still help. And then that knight, this knight doesn't have any upgrades, but the knight able to do enough to whittle down the other crossbow numbers. So I think Babaram wanted a better engagement than he just got here with his crossbowmen. Still not a, necessarily the worst engagement ever, but he he hid this. He built this behind the TC and everything, and then he shows up and just gets immediately spotted. So, nice job there from Kingston. Yeah, um, and I can tell you from what I've been told that the... I know it's very easy from the streamer or viewer perspective to just be like, what are they even doing? You know, and, and like, because you guys don't get to know how much work the devs are putting into certain things. Um, based on my conversations, man, it has been a really big priority for, for the teams involved to make sure that, that the performance is good. So, uh, again, I can't say anything more than that right now, but uh, that was a big concern of mine with the main event and, and even the conclusion of the qualifier. And I am feeling very good uh, about what's to come with the game performance, so... All right, so we arrived at this state in the Babaram Nikov game when they played on this map two days ago. And that was the day where Babaram shocked the world and beat Nikov 1-3-2, kicked Nikov out of Hidden Cup qualifiers, right? Brutal, brutal stuff. Earlier today, guys, we had Veleza losing to Ganji 3-2, another instance of a player who many people would say is good, but doesn't have a chance to qualify for Hidden Cup. That would be crazy talk. Well, that happened, right? And now, you know, as we look at this, and I think about that series where Baba Rum played against Nikov, there is one big difference. And the big difference is that the uh, when he played against Nikov on this map, the score was 1-1. And losing there wasn't going to really put himself in that pad of a position. He went down 2-1. He could have said he could have chalked it up to the Byzantines, being Byzantines. And then he obviously moved on. Did have to win two straight, but he was able to do so. Here, you go. You lose this game. You're down 2-0, and winning three straight against Kingston is going to be really, really tough. So this is, this is like Civ matchup on steroids here. Like, this is even harder for you. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool, too, because Baba can think about what Nikov, like, what he struggled with against Nikov uh, in that matchup. And he already changed it, right? He's on pretty much pure crossbow play right now, whereas before he was on Knights and Monks. Three town centers. He also is on Stone, which feels intentional for a castle timing. He has another TC over here. They both have TC'd the same side. But Baba Ram, though, sent a Knight over here to check, and Baba Ram kills two villagers with that Knight. It's really nice work. Hmm. Yo, Booth, man, what's up? Thanks for the 39 months. And thanks for the, the 24 months on Facebook, too, man. Nice to see you. I know you've been around a lot longer than all that, so. Who's my longest time sub here right now? I don't know who's here. We might have a couple, a couple like, 60-plus monthers in chat who were there for some of the early Hidden Cups. All right. There are people saying me who aren't subscribed at all. So... You may need to pull out a dictionary. Understand exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Walness, three years, let's go. Um, all right, yeah, we've got some longtime subs in there. Year, year and a half, two years, but Baba Rum! He says, screw subs! Actually, it wasn't the craziest fight. It was a very close fight. 
He'll go for a siege workshop towards the middle now. You are emotionally subscribed to me? Okay. Can I... Can I emotionally... Cancel that? <laughs> Do I have a say? <laughs> Do my emotions matter? <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, man. The Baba Ram just kind of... Working on a couple other things here. And he gets caught out. But this is what he was working on. And again, he finds the villagers. The Kingston's trying to take this food still at this stage. And... All of a sudden, some nice momentum economically for Baba Rum. He's got some... He'll lose a villager here, but... He's got vision on the sides with the houses, which I think is, is underrated. He'll have siege through the middle. And he'll also have two relics right now. That's not bad. Uh-oh, siege has found him. Boom. Big shot. And these crossbows need to head away, and it's unlikely he'll escape because Ballistics is in for Kingston. And so, some losses on both sides. Feels like the eco is just shot up here, though. And this is where Khmer farms start to feel really strong. Right in Castle Age. Like, late Castle Age, once you've got 30 or so farms, especially in some of these messier games, can feel really good. I used my free Prime sub for you. Went through all the trouble of connecting my Amazon account. It should mean something. It does mean something. I'm not... I'm not uh, trying to diminish it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that. A lot of people came to Twitch for my content. Uh, people came to Facebook. Not all of you. How many people do we have right now? Definitely not this many people, uh, you know, or even on Facebook supporting me and, and watch the videos and all that. But some people, like, I'm far from finished products, my friends. But if you go back and you watch some of the early content... I don't know how people did it. I really actually, if you're subscribed for more than three years, something is wrong with you. But I mean that in a nice way. Like, I appreciate it a lot. But you must have just been following me and watching me purely out of pity. Because it some of the early commentary wasn't great, man. It just wasn't. But you, you had confidence in me. And uh, we're here now, and we're watching this crazy series between two players who three years ago you probably didn't even know of. And we have a big moment coming up because Camel Crossbow against Monk Crossbow Scorpion. We might have a castle drop here soon. Nice raid here, though, from Baba. Uh, sorry, from Kingston. It pushed Baba off of all these farms. But this is a forward castle from Baba. That's what he wants. Can he get it down? Uh, I don't know, dude. Guys, this is going to be pretty rough. I don't... He just saw the siege workshop, so he might be like, okay, he's just now adding siege. But there's a mangonel over here. Oh, he wants to go further forward. You're crazy. Uh, no, 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 no. The castle foundation. He deleted it. He deleted it. Thank God he deleted it because I think he could have lost it. And this is maybe a chance. Ah! Dude. Baba Rum. Bro. Are you kidding me, dude? You're still doing it, huh? You think this is better? He's still trying. Oh, this is brutal. I don't know if this castle goes up, guys. If it goes up, it'll be a great castle spot. But his crossbows are getting wrecked. There's more army here from Kingston. The siege is still being repaired. The villagers are mostly dead here. And he just really wanted to force the issue. He really wanted to get this castle down in a forward position. But it's just unfortunately fallen flat for him. If this was the main event and they were playing on hero names, everyone would be saying this must be doubt. Doubt confirmed. But um, we can't make those jokes yet. Actually, just kidding. Yes, we can. Uh, that was brutal. And I think... The, the logic here is the units are so cheap for Byzantines and Imperial Age is cheaper for Byzantines. He really wanted to, to make it messy here because if the Byzantines have an easy time, the Byzantines are just going to have an answer to everything. Funnily enough, I think had he waited until he had a few more knights, he actually gets that castle up. But like now he's producing a ton of army. This is actually still winnable for him. His eco behind this is incredible. He's collected 2,000 more resources. He's on the way to Imp. So maybe he does get around to maybe completing this castle. 
We'll see. The camels don't have many upgrades here. The, the knights have armor. They also have attack. They're also supported by crossbows. But again, is it enough for Kingston just to hold on a little bit? His siege fires, and it just feels like Kingston's got enough. Always has just enough. And Baba Rum, oh man. Continues to send bills forward. He might need to delete this. And you never want to delete this castle foundation. Because you're only going to get 60% of the stone back. But yeah, I think you just have to at this point. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Camels are dead. Hold on. Knights are pushing forward. Does he try again? I don't think he should. There's more camels. There's always these crossbows here. These crossbows have contributed a lot. Keep is on the way. KD from Kingston still really solid. God, it's so disappointing for Baba Rum. If he would have gone for a defensive castle, he'd be up by 15 vils. He'd be on the way to Imp, and who knows what could happen. But now, you definitely have to delete that. Delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it! All the stone's gone! 650 stone down the drain. Yeah, that is something a lot of players... Like, I delete mine right away. But a lot of players will leave theirs there. I think... Maybe they forget about it. I don't know. Well, he's going to do the right thing here. Because he knows the middle is not going to be it right now. He knows the middle is vulnerable. He's getting pushed here. But he doesn't want to engage here. Because that's an engagement that Kingston will win. So he's splitting to the sides. And guys, there's no castles here for Kingston yet. But look at this. House wall, house wall, house wall, house wall. And he might be able to keep this one out. No, the knights break through there. The knights are also over here. And now, we got more army running through the middle. And this game is not over yet. This player beat Nikov. And he beat Nikov for a reason. Because he's really good and he's really consistent. And one failed castle is not enough to, to necessarily make, us, make it so this game is over. He still is the population lead. He is all momentum in this game. But Kingston does have camels, and he's got a lot of them. So you need an answer to the camels right now if you're Baba Rum. Would probably have to be the Halb upgrade. Maybe even he could try Arbalest. He can hope that Castle Age camels will die to Cavalier, though. There is that. There's also monks here, so we can get a couple conversions. Just... Camels should still be trading, at least cost-effectively, here for the Byzantines. A crazy game. I wonder, like, if Kingston... I think Kingston might be surprised that the fact that his opponent went in. Because he killed so many vills, and he destroyed a castle. He's probably like, how good is this eco for this guy? So I would be a little concerned, actually, if I were Kingston. And I'd see Imp like that. Kingston doesn't have the castles down yet on the sides or through the middle, so the raid potential is still there. But I think Baba Rum now says, I need to force fights before Imp comes in for these camels. And so he's just brute force, hoping upgrades will do it, just running directly into a counter unit here. And I like, again, I kind of get it because it it's not going to get any better. But is this a fight that you really want to be taking? I gotta enjoy the random teleports we're seeing here on this patch. The fight actually kind of working. Let's go. Don't learn from this. Please don't just spam Cav directly into Camel. It's not going to work out, but in this case, it will. If it is Castle Age Cavalier with solid upgrades against Camel and Baba Rum giving himself a shot. Now, imagine if you had a castle now. You win the fight and boom, forward castle. He probably has a little bit of worry about that at this point. He probably... All his villagers will not follow orders and go forward anymore. No, they will. Sorry. The units are through here. Kingston is in a nightmarish position all of a sudden. And there's random cavalier on both sides. Look at him spread out. Kingston is falling apart. It's actually working. This eco is insane. Something you've got to realize with this player, okay? Is that we... The micro... It hasn't looked that great, right? Even Possibly even all series. It's not like, wow, what great unit control. But look at this economy. This economy is just flying. And he's got 50 on food. He's always producing villagers. He is far less idle TC time than his opponent. His upgrades have been great from the blacksmith. And he just will not stop pressuring. And now, now that you've killed 50 villagers... And you're going to complete this forward castle. It gives you the opportunity to go for pikes. 
when your opponent is hard stuck on camels, will only be making camels, and might not be in a position themselves to necessarily switch into something that can counter these pikes. The cavalier head over here. The cavalier have spread out in that main eco right now. Heavy camel is in for Kingston. But I really feel like Kingston was is was just not expecting all in cavalier to work against camel. And who can blame him? <laughs> but Baba Rum's population is gonna be at 200. He's gonna be max pop in a second. And it's not like I mean Kingston's clearing him up. Sort of kind of. It's crazy. He's always always has something new. And remember, we talked about the golds here. See all this gold and stone that's being mined in the middle? If anyone says slopes is just about expanding to the sides, it is not just about that. You need the middle control as well. This is a perfect example of that. Kingston taking that gold. And those villagers will most likely just go down. I think Baba Rum's about to castle that one. And there's the group of camels. So now, finally, Kingston can maybe breathe a little bit. Try and assess the situation. And maybe come out here to try and engage against this. Um, still, Halb Upgrade isn't in yet. It's on the way. And, oh, he just can't help himself. Okay, no, he's going to place the castle here. 150 villagers for Baba right now. This is the best time for Kingston to take a fight against the Pikes before Halb is in. But he knows the castle will go up and he won't have gold. And, like, try and simplify this game for me. You can't do it. 93 camels against 85 cavalier. The camel should always win, but not with the imp timing, not with the upgrades from Baba and his consistent eco and pressure behind. That was a beautiful recovery from him. And, you know, for Kingston, I think sometimes with Byzantines, you just play too simple. It's like, well, okay, I defended from that. Okay, I'm good. I just, I just keep doing the same and we don't really have the change. But there, clearly, he needed something more. Maybe a couple more upgrades. Maybe a couple more monks. Maybe he needed a castle. He never really had a castle in this game. Um, and, and I think a defensive castle could have worked out for him. But um, the economy for this Frenchman, just insane. And you can see it right there. I uh, collected 23,000 food, 12,000 gold, 2,500 stone. And, and look at this stat. Total villagers in the game, 163 against 175 and yet that was the difference in the economy so it was where the villagers were i think it was having kamur and not having to you know villagers don't have to walk to drop off the food i think that contributed to it and then he he was always building mining camps on these forward golds and stones and it's just everywhere on this map and this is now the second time that he's played through the middle with a strong play on this map clearly he feels like this is the way to play it. And I'll be very interested to see what other players do because everyone, no one else is really doing that. Everyone else is kind of just playing like Kingston did and taking the sides and giving up the middle for a while. Hmm, things to think about. All right, uh, ladies and gents, welcome. We've got humans for Kingston. Ooh, yo, guys, listen, okay? Say what you want about this Civ because I know a lot of people don't like it. But anytime humans are in a game, the game is wild. And I, I mean, it's, it's the Civ is just growing on me. And that's largely because of McCaster. Because if I play against the humans, I get stomped. If I play as the humans, I get stomped. I can't find the balance personally. But this changes the entire conversation of the game. Because in all the other Gold Rush games, it's, well, both players are going to sit back and they're going to boom. Because that second town center can go up in Feudalage with the humans... The player on the other side of things usually feels a lot of pressure to try and disrupt that eco. So, I said this about Kingston. Yes, he's winning this game right now. and uh, Or, sorry, yes, he, he won the first game on land map, and it looked really good. Um, but he has the ability to play very well on closed maps as well, which I think is why he does so well for himself, because a lot of these players are more open map players than these big tournaments. But he, if he can snag an extra win per series because he's really good in the closed map situations, that can help you in these best of fives and potentially best of sevens, right? Burgundians are known for taking a pretty sick eco approach as well. Cheaper eco upgrades in each age feels very smooth. But will we see just straight eco then for Baba Rum, or will we actually see some type of pressure? This ostrich... 
does not want to die. And uh yeah, now it's dead. Uh but Diego, seriously, thanks for the thanks for the uh for the dono and the kind words. I know that people sometimes fall asleep to my content, but it's all good because I fall asleep to podcasts and you know it's it's like a safe place for me at night, you know, to chill a little bit. And uh I think if at least for me, I, it can sometimes be hard to relax. And so if I help people relax and have a good time, that, that, even though I joke that it is you know, not fun to hear people say they fall asleep to me, that is also a positive in some ways. So, uh, Speaking of support, thank you, IndyTard, for the three years. I appreciate that. Three years of subbing is a long time. Very easy to forget. Very easy to... Uh, to lose that streak. Thank you, Muffin, for the 34. Thank you, a couple new people who came in today. Thank you, Iope, uh, Felushka, Curry Monster, Paris, and Rattan. Thank you, everybody. We have some Hidden Cup emotes right now for the subs. We've got the confirmed emotes. So, obviously, during the main event, someone doesn't finish the castle. Now confirmed! <laughs> it's the best example of it, but we have the Who emote for... Uh, you know, a little bit of confusion on who the players might be, which I think is fun. And then we also have the, uh, the bluff emotes. I think there's going to be a lot of bluffing this Hidden Cup. Because, you know, like Viper, he's never really picked yellow in the early rounds of Hidden Cup. I got to look at it. We're going to have a video on it. But other players have, so like there are some bluffs where people will pick yellow. Trying to you know, scare the opponent into thinking they're Viper. Leary, though, Leary picks colors all the time. Uh, and, and I I gotta remind myself if he did that in the previous one, but he'll, like, change his color every other game. Which is also kind of a fun thing when it comes to guessing. Mm, there could be other ways to bluff, obviously, obviously, with the gameplay itself, but when you don't know who you're playing against and the competition's cutthroat, I think players are just gonna have to play their game. But there was only really one time where there was, like, obvious bluffing. And basically, it was Viper in Hidden Cup 3, where he, when he realized, and this is from his winner's interview, he said, when I thought I was going to win the game, I would start to play, like, other players' styles to confuse people. And he got me hook, line, and sinker. Because he was doing, like, guard towers and playing, like, Tato. And he was doing... Yeah, it was it, it was fun. He even like didn't quick wall as much and things like that. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll see. But yeah, we'll have more emotes as well potentially. Uh, but obviously, the main thing is there's the main channel emotes and it supports the, the the content. So really motivating for me to see the sub count go up and the view count go up with it. Ooh, Baba's gonna lose the scout. So this is a this is a bit of a rookie mistake, I think. You know the cumins are going to be going fast feudal. He probably was hoping a scout wouldn't be found, but he's going fast castle. And so he was never, ever, ever going to be able to have that scout anywhere near where Kingston could be. So a lot of players are actually just going to keep their scout in their walls. I know it's kind of like... It's the opposite of a scout at that point. It's a sit. But I think you, you have to have that scout for later on in an ideal world. Yeah, so someone <clears throat> is asking about the value. So value is the... It's talking about the value of the army that is on the field. And so... Oh god, there's a hole. So scout... Scout could actually be trapped in here. I'm, that might actually end up being good in some ways for Baba. So yeah, this scout is worth 80 resources. And it is 0% gold cost on that. So that's what that describes. So the second number is just how gold heavy the cost was. All right, it's not every day that if there's a hole in your walls, it ends up helping you. But I don't think Kingston's going to be too disappointed being able to see his opponent's base either. And his second TC is up. And honestly, I mean, how many people here saw Fire Draken on this map where we had the Wolf Rush and we had the Georgians against the Cumans? Scout is being super annoying. Anybody else remember that? Because I remember that, and I thought that Draken was going to get stomped. 
because fire was all over him constantly. And then you just blink for half a second, and then the cumin player is up 25, 30 villagers. So, as Kingston just... He knows he can't kill that villager easily, and but he's just trying to be annoying and force garrisons and be a pain. As he's doing that, and has now delayed the barracks. I'm just thinking, this is really nice time for Kingston behind this. Guys, apparently it is 2-2 in the Stark and the Dogal series right now. Really? Man, how? Stark just continues to stick around in this qualifier. You gotta love it. I'd love to hear what map that's gonna be in game five. If I had to guess, I don't even know the draft. I would say Stark had a really good shot on islands, maybe? Because Stark is a really solid islands player and he's a bit underrated. Dogal is too. Okay, Byzantines beat Dravidians on islands. Yeah, okay. Doesn't surprise me at all. I, I, I bet you Stark probably went for a transport or something. Because that's what he did in the earlier rounds. T90, move away from the interesting games and then be amazed that they're amazing. Thank you. Don't be sassy. I wanted to start a series from the beginning. I didn't start that series from the beginning. This was in my plans for the day. All right. Good stuff. Unfortunately, I can't cover every single one because they're they're going, they're um happening at the same time. So I'll definitely look later. Um, for the deciders though, guys, they'll all be at different times, so you don't have to worry about me missing one. They'll all be scheduled out and whatnot. Okay, so Kingston Scout might just still run around for a little bit longer, but. He's got a big vill lead right now. And his opponent isn't going to pressure him. I just... It's weird to say it against the Burgundians, but like... I don't know how you stop this, dude. I, I think the resources collected is going to be at least a thousand more for Kingston when he's in Castle Age. Because the farming eco is just ridiculous. Scout's still running around. Scout finally goes down. This does allow Baba Rum to maybe move forward. If he wants to. But what Kingston saw... He got to see the gold. He got to see the stable. So he might expect there to be... Knights or something. Any other game... Then Baba Rum would probably just add scouts. Get the relics and boom. But when you're up against the Cumans... You sometimes feel like you have to actually attack their base. Mudflow game five between Stark and between Dogal. Sick. That's amazing. What's What are the sieves in that? Stark had... Uh, he had a crazy game on Mudflow against running where he lost 200 vils and still somehow won. In the second round as well. Okay, they both have Chinese. Okay, so to be a Chinese war on Mudflow. Fun. Okay. Well, guys, things to look out for. There should be other people casting it. Look around if you want to see that. This is 1-1. One, one. And right now, the big question is, how do you punish the humans? Can you punish the humans? And I think Baba Rum said, nope, can't punish it. So we're going to go three TCs. And, uh, you know, three TCs with Burgundians. Good eco upgrades. On Arena, can lead to you catching up. Here, you do have to wall up a little bit more, which makes things a little bit different. Obviously, you need more map control for the golds. So what I expect here, guys... So so basically, this is how it plays out. All of the resources for Baba, beyond the three scouts he's created, it has to go into Vill production. He doesn't have the farming setup yet. Actually, he's really heavy on stone. He might have some idle TC time here. But in theory, you need to be farming, 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 and creating Vills. And the three town centers... If you're consistent with it, it can actually bring you back in the vill count, and it'll be even. However, right now, we're looking at 21 farms with only one TC producing villagers, right? So that's going to lead to a lot of food, which is what Kingston is going to utilize here. Making some spearmen, making stables. We could probably see some knights, scouts, step lancers to control the map. So, and my feeling here is, Baba's going to need some form of defense... Or at least, you know, eventually he's going to have to fight back in the middle for relics, for the gold. Because he would love to have a TC here, for example. Honestly, the stone timing's pretty crazy. This is way earlier than I would suggest it. Like, his idle TC time is going up and up and up. Because he hasn't farmed and taken food as much. But he might want a castle 
to make his unique unit, and I don't think that's a bad thing for the middle. Does anyone know what Kingston just did there with that gate foundation? So sometimes it's really hard to click a wall behind a gate like that uh, to delete it. So the best way to get rid of it is you rotate your gate and you just put the one end of it over the wall you want gone. Place the gate foundation and then just... Once you place the gate foundation, the, the wall you want removed is gone. And then you can just obviously not build the gate foundation. I barely showed that on screen though, so you might not have seen that. What did I say? A thousand more resources in Castle Age right now? 1300 crazy man this is why this sieve is so difficult to stop but vill count is a lot closer than it was in the past and there could be a castle soon for baba but it feels like building a castle is extremely risky a defensive castle i guess in some ways could be fine but you want to build this anywhere near the middle the light cover on patrol from kingston and maybe this is not something that baba i'm expected Right? This this is something that we expected in some ways, but you don't know what the players are expecting here either. This villager likely just going to go down. A lot of players quick wall that. Baba doesn't give a crap, man. And oh, no, weak. Okay, this should be fine. Knight! No, the regroup! Oh, oh saved. Okay. I was going to say that light cap was extremely weak. Losing that monk there would have been painful, but the light cap are coming back. Like Caver coming back. They know he's weak. And dead. Well played there, Kingston. But the Knights and the Scout, enough to fight off the Light Cap. And there's the castle. And wow, such an interesting decision. He went to stone a long time ago for that. I kind of like it, guys. I kind of like it. Because I think otherwise. Your economy is still going to be worse than the humans. And then you're just never going to get access to this gold. And now, at least, you get the gold. You get better units out of that castle. It could be pretty good. Oh, man. TC going up. Could be denied. Quick walls from Kingston. Scout, though. Going for the monk. Monk gets a conversion, though. And there is a spear here. There's the light cav. I think the monk actually survives. That is really nice for Kingston, actually. We'll see if the monk survives, though. TC going up on the hill is very interesting. And Monk is weak. So, yep, Monk is going to get battered down. And Monk goes down. And now, units back away. Fourth TC now for Baba. Feels like a castle on the hill is what Kingston wants. Built the TC here, which actually delays his castle. But, yeah, I'd love the pike upgrade here. Okay, prediction, guys. Prediction. In the main event... Humans will be banned a lot. We will see them so little in the main event. Okay, that's a prediction. I also think that Malay will be banned a lot because of their win rate. Um, I, I think Chinese will be banned a lot. I think Persians will be banned a lot. And uh, Armenians as well. I think those civs... I think Armenians, because of islands being out there, I think they've already been banned a lot in this qualifier. I could see the main event players not wanting to play against those civs. Wait, when you attack a wolf with the with this unit, does it waste your charge attack? I never thought about that. A monk, first relic of the game, got it. Nice. Villagers in the middle could end up building this castle. And I just, the whole game, because of the humans and how Kingston has played it so nicely. I'm just sitting here thinking, what do you do? How do you stop this? Even with the freaking Burgundians, man. How will this play out? 30 on food right now for Kingston. 35 on food for Baba. Baba might be an imp a bit faster, actually. He hasn't produced near as much army. Kingston really making sure that he locks down the map. So he's produced, you know, getting pikemen, getting light caps, still making vills. And honestly, this castle might go up, but if it just gets trebbed down, Baba's absolutely got a chance. And what, a, for all the things I just said about the humans, what a sick job from Baba Rum. Salutes to him. We are going to see Kingston up right behind him, but even still, I think the eco is pretty decent right now. 
Unit wise, this gets interesting now because it feels very natural for both players to go heavy on pikes. Um, and then both sieves have very different options to counter the pikes. So the humans would want to have their kip check. Now there's a castle, so we could see kip checks, but then you can't make as many trebuchets if you're making kip checks. So it's actually very difficult to rely on kip checks. Clearly here, Kingston says, fine, I'll, I'll just make more halves. Um, Babaram's going to make halves, but his sieve has great gunpowder too. So I think for the time being, and there's the university now, his thinking is we go halb, we go bomb our cannon treb, and then we add archer ranges later once he gets some more wood, and uh, then you make hand cannons. Now, the hill is, of course, extremely valuable for Kingston here, and he's got relics. He's even going to protect this area of his base. He's housewalled this area a lot. And, uh, yeah, it seems like he's in a pretty safe position at home. Here comes the castle, though, from Baba. So he'll have two of them if this goes up. And I think it will go up. Finally gets his first relic. T90, how soon can we expect today's freaking Andy set on YouTube? Um, maybe within 24 hours? Yeah, and I will talk about that set today. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, of course, but I, I think it is something I just gotta... With so many sets happening, we will talk about it. But I won't, like, shout it from the rooftops, and I will try and say... Maybe I can and try and say spoilers beforehand, actually. Yeah, players always want to go for relics, even if there's a ton of gold on the map. I do agree, though, that relics aren't really the biggest deal here. Compared to other maps. This is round three. Winner will move on to a qualifying match best of seven and to potentially make it to the main event of Hidden Cup. And I would not have said, like before the bracket came out anyways, maybe after the bracket I would have said Kingston, but even still, like these, these guys, I would not have said would, would be qualifying. Just, just being honest. I have lots of great things to say about them. I, there's so many amazing players out here that you guys need to know about and this qualifier has hopefully done a lot to show you that. But just being honest, I would have said other names. Nikov was one of them. Baba Ram already killed off Nikov. And he's going to have Trebs here against Kingston now. He's going to have four of them. He still has gold because of this amazing TC spot. He's two relics behind this. We've got a Ram train from Kingston though. Capped Ram. With his own trebs, because he doesn't have as many trebs. Ram is such a nice play. He's loaded up the rams with the pikes as well. And oh, gee. Now, do you go for the trebs or do you go for the castle? You have to go for the castle, right? Whoa. Good luck stopping that. Ooh, now this play is actually clutch. If he can use this to go for the rams, this would be amazing. He's got to desperately repair. He sends units in for the rams. All the pikes for Kingston come out. Both players repairing, but only one player still has stone, and that player is Kingston and the ram. Choo-choo! It is dying roll or is dying thrust. It hits the mangonel, and that's huge here, and now this castle's still up for Baba, but we'll see, and now this ram gets through as well. He's trying desperately to take out the treb. He will take out the castle. He will take out the treb. But still, Kingston doesn't have any more ramps. So, and he still needs an answer to the Trebs. And he still needs an answer to the Bombard Cannons. And, like, this could be really bad for Kingston here. Kingston could lose his hill. Both castles have done so much. Both castles have over 10 kills in this game. How is Baba Rum alive? Against the Cumans of all sieves. Such a sick job. He's still going to be low on gold, though. His gold mining is right on screen. Same with Kingston, to be fair. Guys, if he takes out this castle, and he gets that halb upgrade as well, he can maybe take that hill himself. This is crazy. I love the ram addition. I just, I, apparently, it's just not quite enough. We've got Cavalier as well from Baba. Just anything more than he can mix in here. He's repairing the treb. We'll keep the treb up. The Bombard Cannon. Let's be a little careful. Look at this army count for Baba Rum. This is crazy. 150 vils for Kingston, by the way, who does have the Halb upgrade. It feels like that upgrade is the big thing right now. 
because they're both making lots of pipes. Only one player is researched help. But if you invest a thousand stone into repairing this castle, you are not going to have another one. And same with Baba Rum. He is not going to have another one anytime soon. This castle is so important to Kingston. He just can't seem to get the numbers out. He can't seem to get anything in close to those trebs. That castle is going to go down. Halb upgrade needs to come in for Baba Rum. Hand cannons would be huge right now. Castle's down. 180 pop for both. They're both coming to the gold, but Kingston's not taking gold behind this area. He's only been taking it in the middle. Paladin! Paladin against Halb? Excuse me? Okay. I mean, live your dream, bro, but that's awfully risky here, man. Get Halb as well. Halb is on the way. And, I mean, he's missing some upgrades, too. I mean, Paladin is really costly on gold. Hand cannons could be helpful as well. He's going to do that, too. He canceled Paladin. Okay, that, I mean, that that feels very logical. <laughs> because he knows he needs hand cannons instead. But he only has one range. It's only one archer range. I'm not, I'm not convinced that Baba Rum's just going to take this. There's still lots of halves from Kingston. He's taking some of the trebs. Both players are going to have villagers very exposed. This is extremely messy. This is like... It's, it, it, it feels like... I, I don't know how to describe this at the moment, actually. But this is wild. And when it's 1-1 one, one, and so much is on the line, man, does this matter so much to them. Now, the Cumans would love Kipchak here, but the castle was used in the middle instead of on the back for Kipchak production. So that is pretty much not an option anymore that, for Kingston. And so instead, he's going to try skirmishers. And, you know, this civilization just doesn't have good skirmishers. So, mer, 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 I'm T90. Cumans this, Cumans that. Clearly, Baba Ram has found a way to make it happen here. The, the gold control is insane. He has his hand cannons now. And so those hand cannons will neutralize any halves, and then he just gets another castle. And that castle will protect his gold. Kingston is castleless right now. Still has gold, but what do you make with humans if you don't kill them by early Imperial Age? It's always a problem for them. Oh man, we actually have some raids. Lycat actually ran through. Not exactly sure how they got through here, but they did run through from Baba. Great thinking. So he'll find some kills. That will make life for Kingston so much more difficult This Kingston now drops a castle here. Okay, so funnily enough, I actually don't mind Paladin now. You're at 200 pop. It's 50% off to research Paladin. You're floating a lot of resources. The Hussar move is a safe play. But if you've got 35 on gold and you have over 1k gold in the bank and you're still making Siege, of course, I wouldn't mind clicking it. Because you have more of an answer to the... Uh, you have more of an answer to the halves than you did at the time that it, you researched Paladin before. I mean, guys, the Trebs are here. The Bomber Cannons are here. Kingston doesn't have time. What? What is this storyline? This is nuts. Smile at me in chat if you had no clue who Baba Rum was until this week. Both Trebs went down for Baba there. It was a really bad jinx. A lot of people are going to say that. Hussars get through into the eco here. Kingston's dead. Kingston is dead, and people are smiling about it. Castle will go down. Trebs will go down. What a beautiful play. Crazy. Like, he got kind of smashed in the first game against Kingston here. But just like when he lost that first game against Nikov, he turned it around 2-1 up for Baba Rum. And that, that was just so impressive. I just got to say, you have to work so hard to recover against the human eco. It is so difficult. But, you know, the decision and the timing to get this castle, the Imperial Age play, he adjusts enough. When he needs to switch into the next option, he does. And uh, something I'm noticing about him that you, we don't really look at because we're looking at the fights a lot of the time is his economy is always just beautifully balanced. He's such a good economic player. Well played. I mean, game number two, he beat the Byzantines with just pure eco and unit spam. And then here, he had more food and more gold than the human player who had the middle, right? Um, dang. Now, for Kingston, 
it's just like, unfortunately, it's a timing loss. I think if he's an imp a minute faster, maybe everything looks a bit different. Uh, he would have his castles. He could go for kip checks. But we actually reached to that point where the humans struggle after, you know, losing that initial Trebor. And, and we, I think he knew it as well when he had to go for skirmishers that maybe it was going to be a problem. But I cannot say enough about this player, man. Crazy results. And now he's up 2-1. Resource check. We have berries. Check. We have golds. Check. We have stone. Check. And now we have colors. And we have a game, folks. Neutral resources are good. Relics are fine. Yes! Let's go! Woo! All right. Boars? Oh, God. Oh, God. Boars. Boars are good. Sheep are good. <laughs> You're stressing me out. <laughs> you guys are stressing me out. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. We covered it all. <laughs> oh, okay. So, game four, people. Baba Rum, who beat Nikov here. He finds himself, uh, sorry, beat Nikov in the previous round to surprise everybody. Is now here, and he is playing as the Aztecs, and he is looking to steal something from Kingston if he can. It's going to be hard for him. Usually those boars generate on the back side. So it's really hard to get a boar steal, but in the one we had to restart, he was able to get close. And Kingston is doing the exact same thing here. And he's bringing a villager forward with Lumen. This seems to be a, a pre-selected strat from him. To just have a vill forward shooting all the deer. This is a really interesting strategy. The same thing for him, though, is where he has gone forward with his scout and he's not finding any sheep. So Baba actually passed a boar here. He walked right past it. Um, he's just going to be happy enough to send those sheep behind and then build up at home. Five berries versus four berries. No, guys, it's four berries for both, okay? And it's a map with, uh, with, with, uh, um, how much, how much wood? 671,000 wood, so the trees are balanced too, but I appreciate your energy, okay? I appreciate that energy. Aztecs Malay, Malay are always about timing here against any Civ, but I think it'd be really nice against Aztecs as well. And actually works out for Kingston that the sheep wandered directly into him here. So Barry's being on the front. This is interesting. Hold on. Hold on. Villager from Kingston wandering a little too close here? This could be a dead vill. Now, there's no loom yet for Baba. So if he fights, it'll be tough. But the eagle can kill a loomed vill. Uh, I think the reason Baba's not doing it, though, is because his opponent is going to have that scowl around. So Malay are the most successful civilization so far in the qualifier. This civilization is insane. And having done training games and talked to people about this map with Malay, I think the safest way to play is you wall like this, uh, and you just go fast feudal and you adapt from there. We see it on Arena, fast feudal into adapt. We see it, we saw it on like Gold Rush maps. Um, it's just the Civ's really strong. If they... Use their timings to advance faster to the next stage. If your opponent's being aggressive, you then defend with army. If your opponent's not being aggressive. Uh, Kingston? Hello? A little too aggressive there. That's not what I mean about aggression, but, um, you know, it, you, you just adapt based on how the game plays out. All right. So our crazy day continues here. That villager, quite weak now, will wander home. And the walls come up for Kingston. But this will still probably be Feudal Age. I wonder if he couldn't see that boar back there. Or maybe he just mistimed it a little bit. But he brings in his boar now. Baba Ram has his res. Should be good. He's going to make Militia. And this seems like he's going to stay in Dark Age for a while. Really would love to kill this villager, I'm sure. But it's going to take the fight against the scout instead. Well, guys, what other upsets are in store for us here? This qualifier has been unbelievable. I'm so happy. I, I keep bringing this up, but it is really something I feel passionate about. <gasps> oh, oh, that's interesting. So he walled to this little nugget of wood thinking 
that that wood line extends and i don't think kingston realizes i mean the normal distance is about this right this is this wood line is one of these tiny wood lines and it is not a re it is not a re okay this is not a re you can stop it chat you can stop it all right but that is confusing for Kingston. It could be horrible for him. I think Baba realizes as well because he he's like, ooh, there's been no reaction to this. And it, Kingston probably saw this and said, man, I, I've got a dream of a situation. I can push in my deer. I have my walls down. The drush has not shown itself at all yet, though. Interesting. Now, guys, you've got this wall of wood on the sides, right? You can chop through that. We have only seen it once or twice. It's unlikely. And Kingston sees that eagle and is like, wait a second, what? And now he sees the militia. And now he's like, huh? <laughs> is there a barracks in the That's a weak vill! You put the weak villager on the berry bush? No! What a kill for Baba. I mean, that is as free as it gets right there. The drush pays for itself almost. He can wall up behind it. Home, of course. And Kingston, dude, you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. Another villager! The eagle! Nope, doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. Does keep the eagle alive. Kingston now in feudal age. But he wanted to go feudal age behind walls and adapt. And well, there is a hole. As the great Zero Empires once said, there's always a hole. So wow, I mean, blast from the past with this meta to just see Aztecs try and go fast castle. The thing though is, I feel as though without the deer, the fast castle is actually quite awkward. So I really like that Kingston did that. I'll be curious to see what the resources collected looks like. But this is going to be a lot of Dark Age farms for Babaram, which is pretty rare for us these days. Um, Farming Ika will fly in for Kingston. Yes, Kingston lost a villager, but Kingston will still have more because Malay just spent less time advancing to the next age. And, well, we'll see what we're building up towards here. We talked a lot about stone. I, I do think that Karambit Warriors can be quite nice against the Aztecs. And I think, does Kingston realize how this, these units got in? I actually think Kingston, up until just that second, thought there was a sneak. Look, he looked in the back, and he's looking over here. I think he believes this barracks might be in his... Uh, no, I don't know what he believes, because he saw the barracks there. Never mind. I think he's just scouting his map. Yeah, he's just going to scout his map. And uh, Baba's like, well, he still hasn't walled this. This army's just meant to delay and distract, and we'll see how it goes. Omni Shamble says, T90, do you think some top players who rely on archers won't qualify due to the pathing's impact on the meta? Um, I don't think there's any player who is favored to qualify who relies only on archers. And also, I talked about it earlier, but you and some others might have missed this. If you didn't hear me talk about it, salute me in chat. Um, I can't make promise promises right now, but I'm in communication with Microsoft and I'm pretty confident we're going to have a better patch to play on for either a portion of the end of the qualifier or, or definitely the main event. Still doing some testing on that. So that should not even be a conversation, which of course is the, which is the goal, right? The fact that that's even something that some comes to people's mind is a bummer in the first place. So we should be good in that regard. All right. Hope that clears some stuff up. So the militia, they kill the villager. The eagle went down. Kingston just still booming. But he is not clicked up to the castle age. And Baba Rum has. That is a... Wow, man. That is a really smooth fast castle. You just don't see Drush fast castle too much these days. We've seen, like, Britons a lot more on this map. Britons have kind of come back meta-wise, at least with this map in particular. Drushfast Castle feels very old-timey meta, too. Pretty cool to see the meta with some of the civs be different. I mean, some of them's very much the same, like Malay. But Malay have been dominating on every map, so... But, yeah. According to his Liquipedia profile, 33 years old. He's played the game on and off for a long time. According to people from the French community... 
Apparently full-time job, no dreams or aspirations of being this crazy full-time age player or anything, but likes to compete. Is not new, has been around before. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I've known him for years, but never expected this. This crazy stuff, man. But we are going to see Kingston up at a pretty solid time as well. I like here what happened, uh, what we've seen from, um, from Kingston. He deleted some of his walls. And he escaped with the scout so he can see exactly what Baba Rum's going for. Okay, so there was a second barracks for Baba. And then he cancelled that idea. He deleted it. Which is interesting. I feel like it's a good idea to, to stop doing that if you think your opponent's going to go for Karambit Warriors. Which, of course, he has scouts in eagle, uh, the militia in here scouting so he could see if Stone's going to be mined or not. T90, please cast the MBL game tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I will. Don't worry about it. Yeah, uh, you know, ideally, I would have casted everything. But uh, we need the players to be able to play the games at the time that's convenient for them. For the best of seven qualifier matches, I'll be casting every single one. So we'll, we'll have that more scheduled. That'll also mean that you guys will, of course, be able to watch every single one because there won't be simultaneous sets. Bob has been extremely nerdy here. Um, this vill could die. Yeah, villager's gonna get away. All right, so there are relics in the middle. There's three of them there, and that's something Kingston wants to stop the Aztec player from getting. And because of the additional gold income you get from the relics, second TC's on the way here for Kingston. And he is just mining some stone to recover some of the stone that he had sold earlier. Pretty boomy game, as Quarry tends to be. Which Civ do you prefer in the late game here, though? It's obviously more complicated than that. I think that you you also have to think about the timings, and the timings are always tend to be there for the melee. But if this goes late, and we're talking like the timings are over, right? Malay aren't rushing. I actually think the Aztecs might be better. Atlatl Skirm, Champions, Monks, Trebs. I mean, I'd love to see a Jaguar Warrior, but... Little outpost here from Kingston just to make sure there's no side shenanigans. And here come those relics. And there's a Siege Workshop as well from Baba, so he's going to apply some pressure here. I think Kingston kind of senses this in some way. Like, the safe play here is to be on stone and then build the defensive castle if any pressure comes in. He doesn't see the siege workshop, but the good, the good thing for him is he is on stone. And I also feel much better about the re now, the fact that he's factoring this into his plans. And yep, great scouting. Sees the siege workshop. Now he might be thinking about a castle. Kind of awkward to place it in an area that protects you everywhere. You could stonewall this and then castle here. Or you could maybe delete this house and place the castle there. The scout still being a nerd. And scout still alive? Might actually switch sides here. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Hey, did you guys know that Aztecs get horsemen? Because they do. Oh, man. And of course, there's this whole process. So this scout has to confess what he has shared with the enemy. Right? That's part of the agreement to bring him on board. So, uh, trade secrets have been spilled. And this scout, of course, had the knowledge that there was going to be a castle. So the Aztecs have now been informed. But I think it, it feels weird, but you almost have to know what your opponent knows. And I think in Baba's position, if he saw that siege workshop, you're just expecting a castle to be here soon. But... It just does mean the third town center is delayed. Which means Babarum has actually done a really nice job with his eco behind this. And yes, there's the castle. Can that be denied by the Manganel? It can't, right? If it can, this is horrible. Oh! Ooh, what about the other vills? Was it just the corner vill? I think you could only hit that area. Like, just this. But I don't think it can actually hit these, funnily enough. It's so close. Oh! He found the perfect spot! Oh, disaster for Kingston! It will still probably get it up, but that is really annoying. I think that's an attack ground. Yeah, he's just hitting different spots. 
Also, Vil's randomly. Vil gets converted. Ugh. That's not. That's not. That doesn't feel good. Okay. Eighty percent. Still hasn't lost a lot. Ninety percent. Oh, this feels so painful. <laughs> And the castle, is it going to go up? It's going to go up. Baba realizes this. His siege got too close, though. Will go down. And the monk goes down as well. And now Karambit warriors can come out. Dude, you got to track this vill, man. This vill is a big deal. Oh, there's enough. What? There's two of them. Whoa. T naughty babe in chat. Look at her hammer away. I mean, also, do you realize that two have been converted if you're Kingston? You might just see the one. She dead. But what about this one? Quick walls? <laughs> Dude, I'd be so annoyed right now. She's probably going to die, but I would be so annoyed. Yeah, I guess, yeah, she's going to die here. Four relics for Aztecs behind this. Villager dies. F's to pay respects in chat. And uh, houses along the wood line here to prevent any type of cut. Okay. I would be so unbelievably tempted to go for Jags because it is such a good unit. But I do not think you can actually go for Jags here, guys. I think it has to be castles for your unique techs and for trebuchets. And then if you're going to make infantry, you maybe want to go with like... Oh, man. Maybe you want to go with like barracks to go for the champions because they're still really strong. The res collected for Baba is, is higher. We've got Karambits coming to the middle where he pretty much only has monks and some eagles in protection, though. The Karambits can be really good here because a monk can only convert one unit. Karambit is such a weak unit. You don't really want to be using monks against this, but I guess if all of them get converted, wouldn't be too bad. And he's maybe thinking better about his castle position, but if you need, he wants a forward castle. He wants a castle near the gold. He's going to settle for a more safe, a safer one here. Hmm. Can you engage against this if you're Kingston? You probably want to. He goes in with the Karambits. They slide right through. Some of the Karambits will get converted. There's Eagles, though. There's now Karambits on the side of Baba Rum. And the Monks are also healing. And this is actually a really nice fight for Baba. I think the Kingston expected those Karambits to do a whole lot better there. But, you know, they also have pretty low attack. And they're pretty low HP. So... You know, eagles, you wouldn't make up against Karambits, right? But even them, they're doing enough damage. And I think Kingston, he, he knows that castle could mean Imp, and he's not anywhere near. So as this trader scout is attacking this villager, man, there must be some origin story here. There must be some backstory. Like she rejected him in the Dark Age. Oh, and they both die at the same time. All right, Hollywood's going to pick that one up, but I got to tell you, man. This is looking really good for Baba Rum right now. To beat the Malay to the Imperial Age. Now have Jags, which should be pretty good against Karambits. And also, maybe have Treb soon. Have access to all this gold in the middle, too. Jags should shred these things. Kingston can't place this castle now. This, this castle foundation, guys, shows us how badly Kingston has misread this situation. He is going to be shocked that his opponent is an imp faster than him. He is going to be shocked that his opponent has outboomed him. And that has been my thinking with this Baba Rum player the entire time I've seen him in this qualifier. His eco is bananas. It is so good. And now he's got his first treb on the way. And now he's uh maybe doesn't want to build a castle here. Risky, risky, alert, alert, risky. Okay, that ends up being fine. This castle will go up. There's no way this will be denied because of the presence of the Jags here. And if the Treb just sits here and starts to fire on that castle, Kingston's going to really struggle. And like, you know what else? It's kind of like the side narrative to this, which also adds to how impressive it is for me. We had that game go to like the 13 minute mark after Baba had had the dream of a start. And then we realized there was no stone for Kingston. We talked about it. We had to replay it. How many times have we seen players be frustrated like, uh, I was in a great position. Uh, this is bad. Uh, right? Let it get to their heads. Affect their next game. Dude, this guy's just delivered. This guy's just delivered. Out of sight, out of mind. And has, has shown up again. 
didn't have to steal a board to get to this position. And I'm just impressed. Incredibly impressed with his mindset, with his consistency, with his performance, with his strategy. And Kingston needs to fight this back or he will not be in Hidden Cup 5. And I had Kingston as my favorite today. Just because even though Baba Rum did it against Nikov, I said it would go 3-2 Kingston for what it's worth. Kingston has accomplished more in his career. And that's... Yeah, Baba Rum proved us to us against Nikov. That what Nikov did in his career didn't matter here. And he's doing the exact same thing here. Kingston's going to lose that castle. And now if you don't if you don't have Karambit Warriors, right? If the Karambits are out of the picture, you then have to go range units, which is great for the melee, but it is awful if you don't have the threat of Karambits against the Aztecs because then the Aztecs can go into Eagles or Skirms or whatever. So you need to have both here as the melee. Guys, just now, Babaram crossed a minute of TC idle time. A minute! He was at 30 seconds right when I noticed it. I had to spit it out real quick. He doesn't really need to produce many more vills now. His boom has been insane! And we've got Jags, we've got Eagles, we've got Monks, we've got Trebs. And we are about to have another surprise here in this qualifier with Babaram advancing to the qualifying match best of seven, assuming he holds his position. Now, something I really like here is I really like another castle. And I would really like for him to maybe even wall this, as weird as it sounds. Maybe you don't need it. You know your opponent won't attack you here or here. But I think the castle does enough just to protect this area in case a big attack is coming. These Jags are not elite yet. They're clanging away on the houses. Kingston is out of pop space, actually, guys, because he's lost so many houses here. He's lost his castle. And now he has to show his crossbows. And he shows his crossbows. But there's skirms out here already. Elite Eagles clicked as well. I mean, pick your poison here, Kingston. The Aztecs have the answer. Aztecs have barely been played as well. Like, very low play rate. A trade cart! He misclicked a trade cart! He brought a trade cart! <laughs> he brought a trade cart! I don't think this is him trying to flex. Players will misclick trade cards sometimes. <laughs> He's not sending it into his opponent's base. But he could do so. I mean, what else are you going to do with it? It's just chilling right now. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Skirms and Jags, man. Living the Aztec dream. What in the world? I said we wouldn't see Jags. But... I mean, because I, I thought he would need Trebs. But why not both? Oh, man. Eagles ran into the back here to raid. Army has to be sent over. That is not the army Kingston wants. Kingston, just like everybody else right now, is probably stunned. This is unbelievable. 200 pop. This is over. Baba Rum's moving on. What a run. What a Baba Run from this guy. Still no Elite Jags. Who needs that? GG. What a player. And I, you know, I just, I'm just so, I, I, I'm torn at the moment. I don't know what to think. All the big names are going down. All these players who are expected to win are not making it in. And if you think, I mean, we, we still have, don't know if Bob Rum is going to be able to make it in the main event. But like, guys, if like eight of the players that qualify for the main event are players who've never been in a hidden cup before, that's going to make the guessing aspect and like some of this preparation aspect and 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 all the 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 things that come along with hidden cup so much greater for me and in many ways so much more special a crazy run from baba rum he still obviously has one more round to play kingston is out what a series that was three straight victories from him and if you missed the earlier games it was like game one was really just not that competitive he just kind of got smashed and then he played Gold Rush insanely well when he was behind. He played Slopes insanely well when he was behind. And then here, he, he honestly never really was behind. Um, and I think Kingston will have some things to regret. Like, I think the, the idea of the going for the castle was obviously great. But his economy never could compete with Babaram on the back of that Drush Fast Castle time. Holy crap.